bear right there. Nope. Alaska is full of wild experiences. There's a lot that you can plan to do, but even more things can happen that are completely unexpected. Ah! Oh, God. Oh, God. Today, I'm going to go through my time there photographing bears, eagles, and other wildlife, and give you some tips on photography in navigating the Alaskan wilderness, as well as share some of my journey there, including experiencing charging bears. This is Kodiak, Alaska. All right, so we're out here in Alaska, and for about 15 minutes, I've been photographing this bald eagle, and he's just been hanging out up there. Now I'm getting some pretty phenomenal shots, so I get to just rattle him off, and he's just hanging out with us. I have just the 200 to 600 on, which is amazing for these full body profile shots, but I do also have two teleconverters that both the two times and the 1.4. Now you will lose some light, but you can get some pretty phenomenal head portrait shots with them. So I've been getting both while I've been hanging out here. Now I've got two options here. I can either sit here and wait for him to fly and get a pretty phenomenal shot, probably, or I can go ahead and head to the river when the salmon really start jumping. See, the bears nap during the afternoon, so right now they're gonna be out by the river hunting the salmon. And if I'm looking to get some bear shots, I need to go ahead and go. So I'm gonna leave him be. He's been a phenomenal model. I got some amazing shots of him, but we're gonna go look for bears. Actually, on this particular evening, I didn't come across any bears. So we'll come back to them and let's move on to the sea lions. All right, so we woke up at six o'clock in the morning. Maybe I should keep my voice down because probably the whole neighborhood's asleep. Today, the water should be like glass. So I'm excited to see what we might be able to see. Sea otters, seals, whales, who knows? So let's go check it out. The sea lions had their own designated dock built for them to help encourage them to keep distance from passing boats. It made me very happy that I had a teleconverter so I could get in tight to observe them in their larger than life activities. Clearly we had no problem hearing them from where we were and in addition to the long lens I was able to get some great shots from a distance with the drone. I was of course careful not to get too close to keep from disturbing them. I didn't want to disturb their regular behavior patterns, so I shot this in 5.4K and cropped it in from there. So what we're doing today is we are puffin skeet shooting essentially with cameras. What we're doing is as they leave the cliff, we track them as they get close, we get the photos. And so we're just hanging out here taking puffin photos, but we've been out all morning. We've got <laughs> seals, we've got otters, uh, we heard an adult porpoise. Didn't see it, but we heard it. So yeah, tons of wildlife, tons of chances to get some uh, photos done, but it's a pretty amazing kayaking trip on an island here in Alaska. that way that's where they house some of the navy seals so it's a pretty cool spot right back there it's where they go in the water in the middle of the night when it's freezing cold and they have to do sit-ups I ain't gonna do it it's sunny outside it's been a beautiful morning I've had a beautiful hike and I've photographed a ton of species of birds I've, I've seen some shorebirds you know of course some warblers an amazing hike it's been a great morning but I think it's about time for me to head back. I'm gonna head into town, grab some coffee, and uh, plan to go look for some bears. Then finally, on that morning at the river, walking from the trees, came my first bear. That moment was so fast. I just saw him walk from the trees and I put this camera down to film 
and I just started snapping photos away. I've got some amazing shots. All right, so sometimes things happen so fast, you don't have a chance to get your camera out. And so I was sitting there on the side of the river and fishing game was actually here at the Weir doing an account for the fish. I like this area because it's nice and low and you can get an eye level with the animal and get some really amazing shots that way. Anyway, so this bear steps around the corner, jumps in the water, and I stand up to go take a photo. The grass is wet and I slip and I fall in the river before I even had my waders on. But I pick up my camera and I got some amazing shots of this really light bear. Needless to say, this little curve, I've got to keep my eye on it. So I went ahead and I moved this way now that I'm alone and looking both sides of the river, waiting on the next bear. All right, so right there's where I fell in and the bear was right there by that bush. So, slipped in right there and fishing game was right there, so. Okay. Later that day, the bear I had seen yesterday returned. And due to some fishermen leaving some scraps in the river and not pulling in their rods when they were supposed to, this juvenile bear was learning to become a little more curious. It almost seemed to happen overnight. And due to this, we had to set some boundaries. We had our bear spray and a beanbag shotgun at the ready, just to set our boundaries so the bear didn't learn that people meant easy access to fish. However, we didn't want to block the bear, so we grabbed our last shots and headed up the trail. If fishermen don't clean up and leave when bears are around, they could be teaching bears the wrong thing and potentially even writing its dead sentence. So I want to give that bear some space. Uh, it looks like he wants to fish down here where there's a lot of salmon and easy pickings. Uh, he was grabbing fish down there. Nevertheless, I don't want to block the bear, so I'm going to let him move along this path and do what he wants to do. Ideally, we want them to cross on the other side. So I think I'm going to head down to the Deus since he did turn around and walk that way. I've also got that blind corner right there. So I'm just going to head where there's a couple more people and I'll get some shots from there. I've already got the shots right there along the rock. Great backdrop, a lot of eye level opportunity here, but uh, but I think I'm gonna try out the new spot. All right, so we're here at a new spot. It's a very nice reflective area, so it'd be some great for some nice eye level shots and different things like that. Um, but yeah, it's certainly exciting after seeing the bear. Same distance as here across, as across the shore. Um, but, uh, but yeah, we're here, new spot, take some photos. I'm excited to see him. Sure enough, we went up the river and saw another lighter colored bear fishing in the water. I had seen this bear before, but it wasn't until now that I realized that it was a mama bear. Oh, there's the cubs! Oh! Behind me, there's two what I believe are sibling bears, and they're just play wrestling. So while I get these amazing shots, they're just doing their thing. And I've been here, how long have we been here? 15, 20 minutes while they just do their thing. Cool thing about this is we know mama's up the river and that these two males are keeping her from moving down, but we know that she moves down to the pump house every evening. So I can just sit here, wait for her, wait for them to pass. I know they're gonna get right there. So I'm trying not to use up every piece of my memory card, but it's probably gonna happen.
was crazy. Just got to sit there, watch them, just photograph them, and I, of course, ask strangers to film, but just sit there and watch them in their ha habitat. They've got their space, I've got mine. I respect it because this is their area, but getting some amazing shots. Love Alaska. All right, so while I was jumping in the water, getting all these photos, sitting down, getting nice and low and getting eaten up by mosquitoes, Amanda and Adventure Grammy here on YouTube, she just started her channel. So make sure you give her some love. Her link's gonna be down in the description below. And Amanda was kind enough to film for me while I sat here with this big heavy lens, trying to maintain at least one camera. And so she was kind enough to film the bears on a wide angle for me. So. Got some amazing shots thanks to them. So make sure y'all show Adventure Grammy some love. Again, link down below. mama bear. I'm gonna leave my tripod and let her be. Hopefully she crosses in front of it. Yep, she is. your mama gets uh, across pretty safely so we're gonna go ahead and pull all the fishermen back let them know that she's coming this way and uh, that way she gets uh, safe travels across hey guys she's right in front of y'all oh good yeah yeah oh my god all right all right i like how they i, I already told them oh, i told them too yeah no it's they're right in front of you So when you pull over at the side of the road and you happen to have a camera out, people tend to notice. So less commonly for me, because I like to get a little more up close and personal, when there's a bear out there in the flatlands, a lot of people will pull over and they'll go to take photos. So we, we've got a whole camera school out here. We've got a dude with a 600 Prime. But yeah, no, people just stopped. They've got binoculars. And you know, people like seeing the bears, whether you're local or a tourist. Now me, obviously I'm a tourist. And uh, I just, uh, I'm filming him until he gets from behind that bush and I'll wait for him to do something cool. Eventually he'll come back up this way. So it's all a waiting game. Well, I'm still here, still waiting on the bear. He's taking a nap, no telling how long it will be. But when he does get up, I'm gonna be the one to get the shot because everyone else left. So sometimes it takes a little bit of extra work, but it's worth it. I knew waiting would pay off, but I never expected what happened next. After some time, the bear woke up and started fishing, and at this point, some people had joined me. When suddenly somebody calls out bear, and we look down the street and we see a bear crossing the road. Then this happens. All right, so while we were out here, we had that bear photograph thing out there. Then we had a bear run across the road, chase a car, and like try and bite its tire. So last we saw, he was in that brush. I'm hanging back here. I got my bear spray on me, of course, but it was crazy. Something had stressed the bear out, so he ends up charging the car and getting his paw ran over. Then he turns towards us. Nobody else had their bear spray, and my sister was waiting in the car, so she got this photo of me telling everyone to get back and drawing mine. Luckily, the bear just looked at us and then turned and walked into the brush. There he is again. Yeah. He's right there at that curve. I'm glad to see he's all right. All right. All right. So 
we have the bear over here that we waited long enough and he's moving around and we can photograph him. We saw him cross back over and then cross back over this way. And so it's good to know that he's okay. He was limping for a moment. He was seen down the way limping, but then he came back and he's walking all right. So my sister's taking her chance to photograph it. We're losing our light pretty quick though. So we're wrapping up the day, but it's been very eventful. Seeing a bear charge a car, <laughs> snagging a photo, wild. So it's been a great day, um, but I think we're just about wrapped up. And just before we left, the bear at the beach made his way up the river. So I took the opportunity to get some shots of him as well. I thought that evening my experience had peaked, but the next morning held some of the most magical moments. on the bear. There she is. I heard her. She's got her three cubs with her right behind her, I'm sure. You're all right, mama. You'll do your thing. I just heard the cracking right there. All right, let me get some photos. So that's kind of really frustrating. I have this really nice lens to make sure I can get some amazing shots, but I wasn't wide enough to get all four bears when they were right there. And I mean, the sun was rising. It's a very, it was a perfect shot. And I videoed it with my cell phone. But uh, needless to say, sometimes you just get lucky, sometimes you don't. But yeah, this is my last morning on the river. Uh, tomorrow we fly out and that was, that was just such a great treat. Uh, I'm really happy I got to experience that on my final morning here on the river. And I did get some pretty good shots, but I wanted all four. So uh, I got them facing the other way. So it wasn't too bad, but uh, nevertheless, this whole thing was just such a treat. Well, I was about to pack up and leave, but uh, I heard a bunch of fishermen down the way going, hey bear, hey bear. So I guess one of the uh, males is coming back down this way. So I'm gonna wait and photograph him. <laughs> the best part is it wasn't just one bear. It was the brothers. And that means it was playtime. Those who had never been to Alaska called this trip once in a lifetime. But those who have been told me Alaska gets in your blood and calls you back. And in my time in Kodiak, I learned one thing. It does. From the scenery to the experience, there's no other place on earth like Alaska. So until my next time in Alaska, it'll stay with me. But I'm definitely coming back. <laughs>